And when he returned to Mecca after years of prosecution, when he returns to Mecca with an army of 10,000 companions, the likes of which Arabia never seen before, and he entered into Mecca victorious. How did he walk into Mecca? In narrations, he was on his animal. He lowered his forehead so much, his forehead was touching the back of his animal. He was praising Allah, saying, Today victory belongs to Allah alone. When he stood in the haram, and those thousands of people who harmed him, kuffar, not Muslims, kuffar, now they are surrounded by 10,000 companions armed to the armed to the bone ready at the drop of a word they were ready to give their lives for him sallallahu alayhi wasallam they stood there surrounded by 10,000 companions now knowing we harmed this man for 20 odd years we killed his children we killed his companions we mocked him we belittled him we wiped the floor with him yeah all this towards him sallallahu alayhi wasallam now he returns victorious He says to them, and what do you think I will do with you today? Many of us would love to get our hands on those that hurt us, man. He says, go. Go, every one of you is free. I forgive every single one of you, man. Kufar. And he forgave him. Your own Muslim brother and sister, you can't forgive. Really? You can't forgive them? Why? Do you feel like you're something in your heart, Yanni? Pride <laughs> belongs to Allah. Have mercy amongst one another, my brothers and sisters. Forgive one another. Wallahi, I don't care what the crime. I don't want a single person to stand up in the question and answer and throw me a scenario because wallahi, I'm going to throw it straight back in your face. Forgive and let it go, man. Forgive and let it go. Bury it. And wallahi, as soon as you forgive, you will feel an instant increase of Iman. You know, many of us, my brothers and sisters, we're carrying mountains of hate on our shoulders, man. And many of us, we want closure to situations that have happened to us. Wallahi, I'm here today to tell you, go to those that have harmed you. Go to those who you harmed. And sincerely, Ask for forgiveness or forgive them. Because some of us now, you're thinking, you know what? All right, the brother said a couple of nice words. I'm going to forgive that person, but I'm not going to let them know that I forgave him. I want to save face in front of the people. This arrogance and this pride will be your destruction. I'm telling you, go and make it public that I have forgiven this person, and me and this person, we're equal, we're squared. The accounts are cleared. I'm not telling you to become best friends and go to the park and feed the ducks. I'm not telling you to do that. Some people in your life, they're actually bad for you and you're better off without them. That's not the point I'm making. I'm saying forgive and let it go. Forgive and let it go. Wallahi, forgive me, ma'am. I don't know where my time went. But I want to end with this. <clears throat> The Prophet of Allah was sitting in the masjid, authentic hadith. Prophet of Allah was sitting in the masjid and the Sahaba were there. And the Prophet of Allah, he says to the companions, he says, a man is about to walk in, by Allah, he's from the people of paradise. I want you to imagine, you were sitting in that gathering and the Prophet of Allah takes an oath by Allah that the person that's about to walk into this gathering now is from the people of paradise. So the Sahaba, they started, you know, speaking amongst one another. Oh, 
Who do you think it is? You know, who do you think it is? They're thinking, man, forget it. Some big mama's going, yeah, and some, either Omar's going to walk in or Abu Bakr. Yeah, and one, of, one, of, one of the big boys. So a man walks in. Half of them never knew who he is. They didn't know who the man. Wallahi, even his name is not even mentioned in the hadith. Today, every one of us thinks, you know what? Let's look at the big, this is Islam. Yeah, look at this person, man. And look at that person. Wallahi, man, Allah doesn't look at actions, man. We judge each other through actions. Because we're shallow. Allah judges hearts. So they looked at each other and they, they, they said, Who, who's, who's this man? So the man walks in, no one knew him. The second day, the Prophet of Allah, same gathering, takes an oath by Allah, says the man that's about to walk in by Allah is from the people of paradise. So they look at each other, the same man walks in. Three days in a row, my time is up. Three days in a row, the same man walks into the gathering. So one of the companions, he says, man, forget this, I've had enough, bro. <laughs> Who's this bloke? We don't even know his name. And the Prophet of Allah is telling me he's from the people of paradise. And I've given everything for deen. And the Prophet never, gave, he never guaranteed me paradise. You know this companion, his name was Abdullah ibn Amr. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. Let me just tell you a bit about Abdullah. Only so you can understand how deep this story is. Abdullah is the one who said, man, who, who's, who's this bloke? Three times he was promised paradise. And I haven't been promised. Abdullah is the son of Amr ibn al-As. Amr ibn al-As was the companion that opened Egypt. Yeah, are you with me? Amr ibn al-As is the companion that opened Egypt. His son Abdullah was one of the greatest ubad, one of the greatest people to ever worship Allah. And I'll tell you how. In narrations, in narrations, they say the gap between Abdullah and his father Amr, who knows? 11 years. Between father and son, between, between Amr ibn al-As and his son Abdullah, 11 years. You know what that means? Yani Amr had Abdullah when he was 11 years old, man. Today I've got brothers, they're 35 years old, he's too single. Because you thinking about getting married? Well, I'm too young. Too young? Okay, I had about 10 minutes that was taken from me for people to sit down. So please give me 10 minutes. The brothers and sisters, they're 35 years old, still not married. What's going on? You know, look, well, I, 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 I don't know if you've picked up. I'm a very practical thinking guy. I think logically. Any brother who tells me he's 35 years old and he's not married, and says to me, well, I'm not thinking about it. Forget it, man. There's some young people here, bro. But I've got big words for you, man. Either you're doing some shifties on the darkies, man, or you've got some serious problems, bro. Anyway... So the difference between Abdullah and his father, Amr ibn al-As, 11 years. And Abdullah was one of those young boys who from the word go was one of the greatest ubad. He worshipped Allah day and night. So much so, just to paint the picture of how much of a abid Abdullah was. He was so much of a abid, his father Amr, he had to beg his son to get married. Some of the young ones, what? He begged him? Bro, I begged my parents and they never let me get married. The opposite of today, his father had to beg Abdullah, please get married. So his father forces the man to get married. Now please, authentic hadith, huh? I want you to imagine this. Abdullah, young man, never seen a woman, not like you and I, never seen a woman in haram. Now, you know, he lives in Medina, everyone is covered. He's probably never seen a woman in his life. His father urges the man to get married. Then on the night of his wedding, imagine this, you're a young man. You got a beautiful bride that's fixed herself up. She's all, she's all pampered up. She's ready to go. She's sitting there. You know, it's her wedding night. She's waiting there on the bed. She's waiting for her young husband to come. He has a young bride in there. He comes home after Isha. His wife is waiting. What do you think is going to take place? So he comes home. And he says to her, look, uh, this is the wedding night, yeah? He says to her, look... Uh, Malesh, forgive me, but do you think I can pray two rakat before, you know? So, so, yeah. Which woman's going to say no? She's thinking, yeah, yeah, of course, man. I'm, I'm waiting, inshallah. You, you, you. <laughs> you pray, you know? His wedding night. 
So he walks into the room, he says, Allahu Akbar, and prays his two rakat from Isha to Fajr. And she's waiting. So I'm sure she fell asleep a hundred times. So she said, look, mashallah, this wali I married, you know. So she thought, look, definitely he's going to go pray Fajr. And then, yani, khalas, it's on. So he goes to pray Fajr. He comes back. She's waiting there with that smile. And, and he, said, oh, he says, oh, wallah, forgive me, but I'm fasting today. I said, what? For three days in a row, he fasted the days and prayed the night and his bride sat there fully adorned, untouched. Untouched. Pray to, wallahi, I wouldn't have even prayed Aisha altogether. For three days in a row. So, Amr ibn al-As, he comes after three days, you know, he wants to check up on his new daughter-in-law. So he comes up to his daughter-in-law, he says, so, you know, what do you reckon of Abdullah, you know? <laughs> she goes, well, I don't know, you know him better than me, man. I've been there for three days, he hasn't touched me yet. <laughs> so he was so angry, he grabs his son, takes him to the Prophet of Allah, he says, you deal with this guy, man, this guy, he's killing me. Wallahi, I didn't share this to entertain you, to understand what sort of man Abdullah was. So for Abdullah now to sit in a gathering and the Prophet of Allah promises someone paradise and he didn't promise him paradise, this wasn't something he took very lightly. So Abdullah comes to this man and he puts together, you know, as I say back home, film Hindi, you know, like, like a Bollywood movie, you know, like, like a lie. He says to him, look, you know, me and my father, we've had some dramas, you know. Do you think maybe I can stay at your place for three days? Okay. He... <laughs> He wants to suss out, you know, what's, what's this man doing I'm not doing? He says, yes, 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 of course, please, you know, come, you are my guest. So Abdullah says, I watched him like a hawk. What's he doing I'm not doing, man? He says, so, you know, we prayed, Isha, we came home. I thought, 100%, he's going to crack the hajjud now all night. He says, and to my amazement, he came home, he went to sleep, woke up just before Fajr, prayed some tahajjud, and went and prayed fajr. He says, I was shocked. I thought, look, haram, maybe it was an off night. Make him excuses. Today, you and I don't want to make excuses. No, 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 no. 100% that's what his intention was. So Abdullah says, look, I made some excuses for the man. He says he slept. He slept the night, woke up just before fajr. He prayed some tahajjud. He said, we went together to pray fajr. He said, 100% he's fasting. He says, to my amazement, we came home and he made some breakfast and he invited me for breakfast. I thought, what? What's going on? He says, for three days in a row, he didn't fast a day of them and he only, you know, he only prayed a portion of the nights. So after three days, Abdullah's going to rip himself apart. He says, look, come here, man. He says, I don't have any dramas with my father. But for three days, the Prophet of Allah was promising you paradise. So I wanted to see what you do that's so special. So I got news for you. He says, I watched you for three days and there's nothing special about you, man. As far as actions are concerned, I'll put you in my pocket any day of the week. So the man goes, no, Allah, Abdullah, this, this, this is it, man. I'm not, I'm not hiding anything from you. This, this is who I am. He says, are you sure there's nothing that... He goes, no, Allah, as you see... He says, okay, fine, thank you very much, thank you for your hospitality, you know. He packs his bag and he leaves. So as Abdullah walks away, the man remembers something. He says, oh, Abdullah. He says, yes, what's that? He says, there is one thing that I do. He says, please tell me. He says, every single night, please listen. He says, every single night when I put my head on the pillow, I forgive every single Muslim in my heart. Abdullah says, by Allah, this is the action that has made you from the people of Jannah. Today, we like big names of companions like Khalid bin Walid and Umar bin Khattab. And of course, these are all. But what about companions like Abu Damdam? Abu Damdam in the authentic hadith, the Prophet of Allah was collecting charity from amongst the companions and the Sahaba were standing up giving big money. Our oh, Prophet of Allah, this much gold. Our oh, Prophet of Allah, this much and this much. And Abu Damdam sat there, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was a poor man who had nothing. So he felt so bad in his heart. So he makes an oath between him and Allah. He says, oh Allah, tonight I sacrifice and I give up my ard and my honor and my rights. I give it up to the Muslims. So the next morning, 
the Prophet of Allah gathers the companions and says, Who is the one who gave up his honor and his rights? and his pr Who is the one that made the charity between him and Allah last night? Who is he? So Abu Damdam became so embarrassed. The Prophet of Allah, after insisting, Who are you? And make yourself exposed. Abu Damdam, embarrassed, stands up and he says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, it is I. He says, by Allah, Abu Damdam, Allah accepted your charity last night. Where is this quality? Where is this quality? And for years, the Prophet of Allah, after this, whenever the companions would crawl, wallahi, whenever they would dispute, he would say, why can't you be like Abu Damdam? Nah, don't tell me about these stories, man. Don't tell me about these stories. And let me end. I've got two minutes. I said forgiveness is an issue of Iman. Yes or no? You might think, you know what? I've had some dramas with this person. The hell with them. I hope they die. I hope Allah destroys them. I'm going to stay away. And many of us, we think, you know what? I don't need that person in my life. Let me carry on with my deen. And let me do things and what, you know, and... and well, wallahi, my brothers, I've got news for you. If you think that I can have a fight with you or a dispute with you and you go your separate way and I go my separate way, if you think that, look, let me go to Hajj, let me do a couple of Amras, let me grow a nice beard or maybe wear a niqab and that will suffice for the drama between me and that person, I have news for you, man. Authentic hadith. And please listen. The Prophet of Allah, he says, every single Thursday, your weekly actions are collected, they're gathered, and they're presented before Allah. And Allah forgives all sins, except, except, except those who have dramas between each other. Boy, did I leave the best to last. So I don't care what you're going to come with. You could have had a problem with your brother or your sister or, or anyone else for that matter. And you no longer speak. And since that time, you memorized Quran. You've been to Hajj every year since then. And Allahu Akbar, you've had a thousand people become Muslim on your hands. I'm going to tell you, everything you did from that moment till now equals to a big fat zero in the eyes of Allah. Boy, do I love this topic because it really gets in there, man. Don't think, you know, I can walk around with a nice, uh, nice bead and a nice white abay and my big stomach and say, look at me, I'm the ideal Muslim, man. Islam gets right in there, bro. Islam will break that pride. It will break that nafs. And until you understand that you are nothing, you value to nothing, you equal to nothing, all pride, all honor, all status belongs to Allah and not to us, you're in a world to hurt, man. So my brothers, my time is up again. Forgive one another. Have mercy amongst one another so the one in the heavens can show mercy upon us.